have uh, the special counsel report here. It's split into two volumes. The first volume is devoted to Russia collusion. It's just shy of 200 pages. And the second volume looks at the issue of obstruction. I've been able to peel through it. It's uh, lightly redacted. And where there are redactions, there's actually a statement justifying the redactions, whether it's grand jury material or ongoing investigation. So for folks at home, uh, it's very simplified. It will be easy to follow. I want you to bear with me because I've got four areas that I want to highlight and read from the report. The first goes to the issue of why special counsel Robert Mueller could not reach a decision on the obstruction question. And it reads, quote, because we determined not to make a traditional prosecutorial judgment, we did not draw ultimate conclusions about the president's conduct. The evidence we obtained about the president's actions and intent presents difficult issues that would need to be resolved if we were making a traditional prosecutorial judgment. At the same time, he writes, if we had confidence after a thorough investigation of the facts that the president clearly did not commit obstruction of justice, we would state so. Based on the facts and the applicable legal standards, standards, we are unable to reach that judgment. Accordingly, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. And that phrase will be familiar to people who've been following this issue because Attorney General William Barr quoted specifically from this section when he sent the bottom line findings to Congress at the end of last month. I want to get to another section here because it goes to the issue of why there was a written question and answer session with the president and the special counsel decided at the end of the day not to subpoena the president and force an interview. And that section reads, we also sought a voluntary interview with the president. After more than a year of discussion, the president declined to be interviewed. Then the following section is heavily redacted and it cites grand jury information. Mm. Ultimately, while we believed that we had the authority and legal justification to issue a grand jury subpoena to obtain the president's testimony, we chose not to do so. We made that decision in view of the substantial delay that such an investigative step would likely produce at a late stage in our investigation. We also assess that based on the significant body of evidence we had already obtained of the president's actions and his public and private statements describing or explaining those actions, we had sufficient evidence to understand relevant events and to make certain assessments without the president's yeah. testimony. So the bottom line there is that the special counsel is saying they had a lot of information from other individuals, records that were provided by the White House. They did not feel that they needed to take that step and subpoena the president. They would be satisfied or it was adequate to use uh, the written uh, question and answer sessions. Now, this is a very important part of this, and it goes to the moment, I don't think we've had these details before, when President Trump learned that a special counsel had been Page appointed. 78, Catherine. That's right, 78. Now, they're in the Oval Office, and remember, this is those, those eight days in May between the firing of Comey and the appointment of special counsel where a lot of very important events go down. And it states, and it's according to notes written by Hunt, this is a member of the team, when Sessions, that's Attorney General Jeff Sessions, told the president that a special counsel had been appointed, the president slumped back in his chair and said, quote, oh my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. I'm effed. The president became angry and lambasted the attorney general for his decision to recuse from the investigation, stating, how could you let this happen, Jeff? The president said the position of attorney general was his most important appointment and that Sessions had, quote, let him down, contrasting him to Eric Holder and Robert Kennedy. Sessions recalled that the president said to him, quote, you were supposed to protect me, or words to that effect. And that goes to something that we heard earlier today from Attorney General William Barr, that there was a lot of anger and frustration on behalf of the president. He characterized it as very genuine because he was not guilty of these allegations of collusion. And I just want to go back to page 75, and then I'll continue reading with more headlines, because it goes to this issue of intent. The president later asked Rosenstein, that's Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who would ultimately oversee the Russia probe once Jeff Session was recused, to include Russia in his memorandum and to say that Comey had told the president that he was not under investigation. 
and the president's final termination letter included a sentence at the president's insistence and against McGahn's advice. That's White House counsel Don McGahn stating that Comey had told the president on three separate occasions that he was not under investigation. So on the intent question, the president wanted to make clear that he was not guilty of these allegations of collusion and that this had been shared with him with the then FBI director James Comey. Okay. So I'm going to just take a yep. break Keep here, going. continue yeah, we'll reading and flagging yeah. headlines as we you get bet. them. Catherine, Thank you. We'll